That's an important topic because actually yesterday there was an update that um, about 3.1 million Kenyans are affected by this yeah. uh, situation in the country that is across 23 counties. So that is actually more than mm. half of the country. Um, I don't know if you have something to add to that, Honorable Boss, about the situation. And also because Baringo is not so far from Wasingishu. Yeah, yeah. Wasingishu is extremely dry. I actually have no grass on my compound. So that just tells you that how bad it is extremely dry, you can even see the heat in Nairobi. So climate change is real. But uh, the Kenyan parliament every year puts aside 50 billion shillings for farming relief. Every year, year in, year out. And that's why we are saying that what actually should be done is the 50 billion should be put in advance mm -hmm. to prepare for the farming. For example, <clears throat> making sure that we grow grass and bale it and store it and then be able to bring it to Tiati. We should be able to have a situation where we already beef up the growing of um, food mm -hmm. in areas that can grow it at the time it is growing it as a reserve to be able to provide at that time. Unfortunately, what we are doing at the moment is that, for example, you can't plant maize this year. I'm not going to plant maize this year because the cost of fertilizer seed is so high that it's, it's, it's not worth it. So if people were subsidized in Wasingishu, for example, sufficiently, they would provide enough food reserves that we can have to give to, mm -hmm. uh, to, give to those areas that will be hit by famine. So famine is predictable. The drought is predictable. And we even budget for it. Why do we budget for, the, for, fo for food relief rather than boosting food reserves? Actually, that's what the bottom-up economic model is all about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting.